Good morning. It's good to be with you folks again, and what a wonderful day with the rain. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, following announcements, not in your service folder, today's live stream broadcast is given by the members here of Salem. And of course, due to this wonderful rain, the picnic will not be held at the park, but uh, will be held here in the Fellowship Hall at four o'clock. Pulled pork sandwiches will be provided by the youth board as well as plates, silverware, napkins, and bottled water. Please bring a side dish or a dessert to share and come join in the food, fun, and fellowship. Salem will be assembling school kits and supplies are needed to make the kits. You can find a list of supplies needed in the regular announcements and donations can be left in the narthex. If you have business in the church and unlock any outside door, please be sure to lock up when you leave. There have been several occasions recently where doors have been found left unlocked. Frank and Joanne Osby, who were members here at Salem for many years, will be laid to rest on August 11th at 10 a.m. at Hillcrest Cemetery in Albert Lee. Peter Norby, Joanne's nephew, will officiate the committal service. Family and friends are invited to join their children, Cheryl, Chris, and Paul, for the final goodbye. Following the committal service, a luncheon will be held at Wedgwood Cove on the south side of Albert Lee. Flowers on the altar are in honor of the wedding of Alec and Caitlin Anderson, who were married here yesterday. We wish them God's uh, love as they begin their new life together. So please refer to your weekly announcements for any additional updates. Let us begin our uh, worship with the brief order of confession, and I must admit that I forget I've only been here once. I'm Pastor Ken Jensen from Elberly, I didn't say that. Uh, so I don't know when to do this. You'll have to stand on your own, okay? <laughs> Those in the front pew lead the rest, okay? So let us begin with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promises are sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. We continue our worship with the gathering hymn, We Come to the Hungry Feast.
let us together pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Psalm 145 will be read responsibly, responsibly beginning with the men. Word. Lord, you are good to all and your compassion is over all your works. Upholds those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The second reading is from Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are the Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, 
They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our gracious Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> the story which immediately precedes today's gospel is the senseless beheading of John the Baptist. Upon hearing of John's death, Jesus got into a boat and sailed to a deserted place. Why did he retreat in search of a solitary place? Was it to grieve, to pray, or to hide? Grief is understandable for many reasons, including the fact that the Baptist and Jesus were cousins, remember, and they were also cohorts in ministry. Prayer is a probable answer, for on several occasions, Jesus would go off by himself to pray. And going into hiding is not out of the question. King Herod had heard of Jesus' rising popularity, and he wanted to meet him. In addition, there were rumors that Jesus was John the Baptist raised from the dead. Many translations imply that the crowd followed Jesus along the lakeshore because Jesus was on the move. There were the curiosity seekers, to be sure. There were the desperate seeking healing. And most likely, there were among those who had recently heard of John's death. They were confused, bewildered, and in grief. Matthew writes, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed the sick. The sick can also be translated as the weak or the sickly, or as a reference to, to some uh, who were suffering paralysis. It can also apply to weakness of spirit. For those who were grieving the killing of John the Baptist, this was the last straw. Matthew notes that Jesus had compassion on the crowds. Some translations translate it as pity. I don't like the translation pity. Because compassion implies that what one is affected with a gut-wrenching experience. Compassion is a visceral emotion, something that goes far beyond merely feeling sorry for someone. Jesus is torn by what he saw. He shares in their gut-wrenching pain. And so he sets aside his personal time apart and turns to healing the sick and helping the weak. Helping the weak can be time consuming. I served as chaplain in a long-term care facility for almost 15 years. And assisting the weak, comforting those who grieve, is very time consuming. 
And that may explain why it got so late in the day. For whatever reason, the crowds did not disperse. The disciples took notice and they approached Jesus and said, send the crowds away so that they could go into the nearby villages and buy food. In other words, let them feed themselves. Many of us would have responded in the same way. But Jesus would have none of it. He responded, they do not need to go away. <clears throat> you give them something to eat. In other words, you do something about it. You can't sit back and let me do everything. I need you. I'm counting on you to solve the problem. Now, we're probably more familiar with John's account of the feeding of the 5,000. For in John's gospel, the disciples go out into the crowd and they find this boy with a sack lunch of five loaves of bread and two fish. And they bring the boy and the sack lunch to Jesus. And then he breaks the bread and the fish. But this is not the story in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus is asking the disciples what do you have among yourselves? And here's where it gets interesting. Matthew tells us that Jesus took the loaves and the fish, said grace broke the loaves and fishes into pieces, and then he gave it to the disciples who distributed among this crowd of 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And after everyone had eaten their fill, there were still 12 baskets full of leftovers. Now many sermons have attempted to explain how this could happen. There's the more literal approach, which simply said that Jesus did what nature does, only he did it in minutes, what may take nature months to accomplish. And then there is a more mystical approach in which the feeding of the multitude is interpreted to be spiritual nourishment, such as we will receive at the communion rail shortly. In receiving the crumb of bread, the needs of the soul are satisfied and one's physical hunger then is also stated. A more popular explanation is that several people in the crowd had food squirreled away under their tunics, and when the boy, or in this case the disciples, showed generosity in giving their lunch away, they chose to do the same. It's similar to the pastor who stood before the congregation and said, we have more than enough money to fix our leaking roof. The money is in your billfolds as you sit here this morning. It is my personal belief that taking away the reality of miracles does no one any good. Miracles exist. We need them. And Jesus gets that. But I also believe this story is more than about the miracle itself. It's not so much about the what as it is about the why. The background of the story contrasts the lifestyle of the rich and famous exemplified in King Herod's court with those who come to Jesus, the poor, the hungry, those seeking relief. It's like switching channels on the TV from watching the Kardashians to immigrant children at our border. I believe the story serves as a reminder that God still cares for the vulnerable, the poor, the sick, the hungry, the immigrant, immigrant and the dying. Jesus had compassion on the crowd and he remains a compassionate Jesus. That has not changed. 
Neither has Jesus' admonition, admonition to his disciples changed. He says to us, as he said to them, they do not go away and fend for, they need not go away and fend for themselves. You feed them. Daniel Deffenbaugh, who was an associate pastor of religion at Hastings College in Hastings, Nebraska, noted that Jesus blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to the crowd. Blessing, breaking, and giving are the three essential actions of faith that mark the presence of the kingdom of God. Deffenbaugh continues saying, it is impossible to know which of these three scenarios underlies the story, blessing, breaking, or giving. Given what we know about Jesus' mission to proclaim the kingdom of God as good news for both body and soul, the latter explanation seems to hold the most theological promise. For the real miracle that takes place is not the multiplication of a few loaves and fishes, but the elimination of the barriers of selfishness that keep so many then as now wanting and living in fear of the other. On the one hand, our sinful nature tells us to hold on to what we have and guard what we possess as mine. On the other hand, grace acknowledges that what we own is God's blessing. God has blessed us in many and various ways, and so grace acknowledges that what is mine is thine. In other words, what I have, little as it may be, can be broken and shared. Second Kings chapter 4 <clears throat> relates the story of a widow who is being threatened by her creditors to whom she owes money. They say they will take away her sons as collateral on the debt and sell them into slavery. And so she cries out to the prophet Elisha for help. And the prophet responded by saying, what do you have in your house? Nothing, she replied, but a little oil. Elisha told her to go to her neighbors and ask for all the empty jars they had. And after she had collected their jars, she closed the door to her house and began to pour what little wine she had left into the jars. But the oil never ran out until all the jars were full. She went to Elisha and told him what had happened. And he responded, go Sell the oil and pay all your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left over. Five small loaves of bread and two fish fed over 5,000 people with five baskets left over. The jar containing a few ounces of oil filled so many jars that it enabled the widow to pay her debts with enough oil left over for she and her sons to live on. Both stories are about where we see as scarcity, God sees as abundance. When facing a need, the first question to ask is, what do I have in my house? Are there a few loaves of bread and some fish or a little olive oil remaining in a jar? What do I have to give to God that God can use in a miraculous way? As a young idealistic pastor, I wanted to be that champion on the white horse, you know. I was inundated with fund appeals to eliminate poverty that existed in the third world. Nothing has changed from 50 some years ago. The need is great and I have so little to give. It didn't take long for compassion fatigue to set in. 
Then a TV ad caught my attention. So you can't save the whole world, but you can save a piece of it. Where I saw scarcity, God saw abundance. We may not be able to save the world individually, but when we pool our resources, miracles happen, just as they did with the disciples. And so Jesus is asking us this morning, what do you have? We may respond, oh, very little, only five hot dog buns and two sardines. But Jesus says, bring it here. It is enough. He blesses what we bring and we discover, yes, it is enough. May God's blessing rest upon you all. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and prov provide relief to those in war torn areas. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting, accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors. Provide for feeding ministries and food banks in our area that we share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. This week we pray for these Salem members, Corey, Kelly, Tyler, Morgan, and Landon, Christian, Roger Christensen, Joel, Marlis, Amber Christensen, Brooke Christensen, Kit, Dottie, and Betsy Byers, William Clark. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Is it your tradition to share peace with one another? Then let's do it at this time.
God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant given and shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks to the smallest seed, bless and keep and sustain you now and to the end of the age. We conclude our worship with hymn 674, Let us talents and tongues employ. and tongues in poi, reaching out with shouts, shouts of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, runs abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, woes abound. Christ is able to make us one, at the table he sets the tone, teaching people to live to bless, love in word and in Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus Christ ascends and sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of God. Gives us love to tell, bread to share. God, Emmanuel, is everywhere. Go in peace, share the harvest.